Remember, the YouTube ads feed the ducks. <laughs>
60 on it or 65 or something. It's pretty close. So, but it's still, if you look at it, I took half the dark things out and the pool still looks pretty full. But uh, the Muscovies got really, really dirty because I guess they were the ones that were laying on the bottom all the time and the ducklings were crawling on top, so the Muscovies are just filthy. Uh, like really, really filthy. The midget duck got really filthy too. There's a lot of feces in there. But uh, it's all cleaned up and it's so easy. These kiddie pools are the answer, uh, you know, for doing these like nursery brooders uh, when you've got, you know, when you want to keep them away from the other ducks. Because one of the ducks, uh, the younger ducks that we have in this side of the pen can't jump into these pools. Now the adult duck could jump in. That's uh, be a different story if you had adults around, but I've got juveniles and they, uh, it's too tall for them. But I just basically, what well, up? basically I just take a, uh, I've got this old dust pan here and I just scrape out the pool. And Bang, it's done. It cleans up really nice. You don't touch anything. No. But the uh, Muscovy's got really dirty here. Actually, everybody could actually have a bath. Uh, you know, if I wanted to get really adventurous, if I had time today, I, I could put a little pool of water in here. And, but I don't. I gotta go wash the uh, hatcher out, and I'm gonna go and uh, start cutting down a serious amount of long grass and, uh, and bulrushes. And... But the, uh, the ducklings got more room now. Nothing like taking care of a whole bunch of different ages. Uh, <laughs> it'd be so much easier if they were all the same age, but uh, you know now we're dealing with. I've got three different ages, uh, you know, three different groups here that I'm dealing with. It uh, really cranks up the workload. All right, I'm off to uh, start uh, washing out the hatcher. It's so funny. Doug won't leave the barn. This is where he's staying. I, I keep going away, and coming back, and he's just. Uh, I think he thinks this is the only safe place there is with the ducklings. I guess it's the only place that he hasn't gotten shocked yet. Because he's gotten shocked with the adult ducks. Yesterday, you know, he got shocked by the, uh, the where the, the uh, juveniles are, or, you know, on the pen. And, oh, he's getting up. I just couldn't believe it. I've been doing work coming back and he's staying here. Doug, he's a uh, poor guy. Uh, last time, I, I'm trying to think, it took three days for him to get over the, uh, the electric fence shock. So we'll see how long uh, it takes to get over, the, uh, over this. But this was a good one though. Poor guy, he's a mess. All right, I'm going up to uh, start washing the hatch out. Damn, I don't have my shotgun. He was right in the yard. Going around the pen. Unbelievable. Just, uh, I was down in the barn and I heard the ducks freaking out. And uh, he was he's really scrawny too. But... I don't know if you caught that in the film. I tried to uh, run around and turn the camera on. And I, do, I didn't have my shotgun with me because I'm in the barn cleaning. And I came around, Doug didn't see him. So I dug running beside me. But I definitely got to cut all this grass here. This is where he came out. It was right here and he came right into the pen. If I would have had the shotgun, I, I could have got a shot off. I don't know if I could have got him because he was pretty fast. But... But this one wasn't the same one. The one that I saw in the swamp was uh, very fluffy and red. This one uh, actually looked like mange, had a bad case of mange. So there's a couple uh, here. But he was definitely, he was like, he's running around the pen. Oh. Uh, I don't have the electric fence on because Doug and I are out here, but uh, you know he can't jump the fence. I gotta get all this stuff cut. And we got to get this thing. I, I don't know how I'm going to get him. Like he's uh, it's, it's this is going to be a trick. Uh, but he was like, he was right here. Actually, I came around. I'll show you. I was over there. I uh, just came around the corner of the barn. And right where I'm standing here is where he was. Um, you know, if I would have had the shotgun, but I, you know, like I said, I didn't. Damn. I just never thought, you know, I'm out here working in the yard. This this guy is getting uh, some serious balls on him to come into the yard. And uh, and Doug was, you know, sitting in the in the garage or in the barn there. But I couldn't get Doug around. Uh, him and I both ran around and he didn't see him. He didn't. Uh, I saw him. I barely saw him because he darted into the grass once he saw me. And uh, it, it seems the crows are all in here at the same time. So it's almost like the crows are, are coming in because they know there's going to be a kill. It's the only thing that makes any sense. Only thing that makes sense. Like right now there's about one, two, three, seven crows. So the crows came in uh, right when he uh, was in the yard. So 
the crows are following him around. There's only I can think of hoping that uh, you know he's going to kill something and they're going to get a snack. But I, I've got some serious cutting to do. I got to I got to get this all cut. But this is the area. Just like I said last night in the video, this area is where he's coming out of, and I just caught him again coming out, and that's where he went back in. So he's using this area as uh, the, the cover to get to the pen. And the ducks were just freaking. You know, it's strange, you know, like, Doug goes around the ducks and they don't care. You know, he walks among them and they don't quack. But this thing, this little tiny thing, and he only maybe weighed 10 pounds tops, uh, you know, it just freaks the ducks right out. Freaks them out. And I almost let the ducks out because I was out here. Uh, I thought, oh, I'll let them out because, you know, I'm going to be out cutting. But I hadn't started cutting yet. And thankfully, I didn't. But, you know, here's the, you know, the thing is, here's the trap. You know, we'll go down to the trap and it's like... This morning, nothing in the trap, not touched, not, uh, you know, screwed with. I don't understand it. It's got a perfectly good duck leg hanging in it. Like, and it's right down here. Look, there it is. You know? There's the duck leg. You know, and there's the, you know, the trap. And the, the fox is not interested in down here. Uh, well, uh, you know, we've had the ducks in lockdown five days now, and, uh, you know, I, I but the, fo the fox is coming into the yard, so, unless I, uh, you know, somehow I just spend a day sitting here and quiet, you know, and leave Doug in the house and, and uh, you know, actually sit in my bedroom for the whole day. Uh, from the bedroom window with the 22 and see if I can get a shot off that that might be my only way I'm gonna get this guy you know it just might be the only way and what a waste of a day you know just sitting in the house you know with a 22 hoping that the you know the the fox is gonna come into the yard but I can get a, a good shot from the house you know and I and this fox I don't know I might I think that might you know it might be a plan of action and just sniper shot him you with know, the 22. I got the 22 uh, sighted in for you know 50 yards, you know dead on. Uh, you know I can you know I can basically you know hit a, a dime at 150 feet. So you know I have a good I could get the fog. I could have got him. I, it would have been such a sweet headshot. All right, well I'm gonna uh, start washing here on the, the back deck. I guess I'm gonna wash the hatcher and all the parts, and you know the ducks are safe. I'm not gonna let them out. And I was thinking about it. Oh, close call. I don't know if we got any of that on video. Well, Chicken Doug and I uh, just went for a, a walk and I found a whole bunch of trails. This guy, uh, or these fox, they're not just one. There's a couple that, because they're two different foxes I've seen so far. Uh, they've got a ton of trails coming up through this, uh, the, all this growth right here. So I've got to, uh, I gotta get this clear cut. And I'm going to have to, uh, I think the only way I'm going to get this guy is uh, to sit upstairs uh, and waste the day and just sit there and wait because he's coming, like it's the middle of the day, it's around, uh, it's about 2 o'clock right now um, and they're coming right into the yard at 2. So this starving them out, uh, you know, locking the ducks up has made them desperate. Uh, there's no food, uh, well there's no easy food and they're thinking they can just come into the yard and, and get something out of the pan. Uh, which is not possible. The pen is uh, is not it's just not possible. It goes through the pen. Uh, like a, unless you're a raptor, something that can fly into the pen. That's the only way. Um, so it's I, I, I'm I got some hunting. Uh, I think I'm going to end up. Uh, I think I might end up taking a day that I'm not going to be videoing, and uh, uh, and I'm just going to focus on hunting here. But I got to get this cut today. But first, I'm going to go wash the uh, hatcher. And I've got the shotgun here right beside me, just in case the, the little bugger shows up again. I'm, uh, I never would have thought, you know, in the middle of the day like this, two o'clock, you know, that they would, uh, that he would come into the yard, like, because I did, if I would have had the shotgun, I, yeah, I would have, you know, I could have got a shot. The spray might have, I might have got him with a pellet, with a spray. Uh, he was clear of the ducks. He was over, I, you know, I, I, I don't know, I'd have to look back in the footage uh, you know, when I turn the camera on, but I've got, I did get a view of them not through the wire of the fence. So I actually did, I, uh, was a, you know, a, a potential shot if I would have had a shotgun. I couldn't have got him with the, with the rifle though. 
even a machine gun wouldn't have got him. Uh, it, it was a shotgun shot. But it's two foxes. One really fluffy red one that I saw the first night, and then this one, uh, which was a, a lot darker and really skinny, really, really skinny. Not, not a healthy looking uh, fox like the first one I saw. So that night that you know I saw the fox take off down the uh, swamp and jump to my neighbor's place, that second fox, uh, it wasn't that fox that came back. It was a second. It was that second fox that came back that killed that duck. It's the only thing that makes any sense because that that first uh, fox I saw clearly took off and went onto my neighbor's property. So uh, I've got two uh, little, little buggers, uh, you know, here. So until I shoot two of them, or you know, we find two dead ones, or Doug kills two, or the bottom line, until we see two dead foxes, uh, their property's not safe. Well, if the duck adventure didn't have enough curveballs thrown at it, um, I just uh, was talking to my neighbor across the road, um, and he was telling me down the road, uh, there, there's been two calf killings uh, about seven kilometers south of me and there's been there were two calves killed uh, in the past couple of weeks actually last 10 days and the Ministry of Natural Resources uh, officer that came out and investigated it all uh, said that there was uh, uh, the claw marks resembled a cougar and they, they felt that it was a cougar attack so I never thought anything of this this morning and just and I was I just after I got back from my talk to my neighbor uh, these are the tracks that I found in my yard this morning that I didn't even think about and they're not um, uh, and they don't look like cougar tracks to me but you do you take a look here look at like that's a big paw like way bigger than uh, than uh, Doug's like Doug doesn't leave footprints like that. I, I, I can find you Doug footprints around here somewhere. Uh, I looked hard enough. Uh, like those are really deep. Uh, and it doesn't look like a paw of a cat. But it's, uh, it's, way, too, it's way too big for Doug. So I, I'm at a loss. I'm thinking, you know, oh, do we have cougars here now? You know, like, you know, we got fo rogue fox in the middle of the day, which I'm not cutting today. I've decided uh, I'm going to uh, set up a trap. Uh, I'm, I, if I cut... Now, if I cut that whole piece out the, this afternoon, I'm taking away the, the fox's cover. And he, right now, they're hungry. I think it's like day four or five, the ducks have been locked down. So they've had nothing to eat if they've been feeding off of my ducks, which I think they have, because one duck will probably feed a family, uh, you know, a fox family, you know, four days, five days. Uh, you know, uh, so, you know, there's a lot of duck. So I'm thinking that now they're hungry. That's why today they were here in the yard in the middle of the day with me here. Like, it was like two in the afternoon so the only thing I, uh, I I thought to myself Matt don't cut anything down leave it the way it is uh, I've got a chair up in the window now I'm just gonna go clean the 22 I'm gonna do a test shot to make sure it's hitting exactly where I think the fox is gonna be where I saw him today and then I'm gonna sit up there tonight at uh, twilight I'm gonna do my chores really early um, so there's no activity I'm gonna lock the ducks down and I'm just gonna go upstairs and wait and I think my gut's telling me, and Cindy thinks so too. She thinks that uh, they're going to show up again when if the yard gets quiet and we shut down. And, uh, you know, who knows, maybe 8 o'clock, 8.30, you know, the mosquitoes are bad. And I'll be sitting upstairs where the mosquitoes aren't bad. Um, and I can get a perfect shot. Uh, and I'm going to set the camera up. And if he shows up, I'm going to hit the record button for you and uh, film it happening. If not, you'll be just getting a film of the, the aftermath of a 22 to a little 10-pound fox. So, um but I think if I cut that down, it'll be a mistake. I think it'll. Uh, I think if I did that, uh, it would tonight. It would change things for the fox, and I don't want to change anything. If they're so daring that they're willing to come in right here, like right there on my lawn, uh, they'll do it again. So, and if they do it again, and I'm ready, uh, they won't be doing it again after that. Okay, it's 3:30. I'm on the deck here. I'm just washing up. Uh, all the, uh, the hatcher uh, tools here and uh, uh, the fox showed up and I got the shotgun and I ran down but he disappeared uh, before I could get a shot and I was in my bare feet running down there tactical style with the shotgun hoping to get one off but he was right I was washing and he was right there the duck started freaking and I looked up and there was the fox so that's uh, an hour and a half ago so he's really he's hungry and he's had lots, he's tasted my duck, put it that way. And uh, he wants more and duck is off the menu. So I think we might get him today. I, I feel very positive on this. And like I said, I'm not doing anything down there today to, to disturb that area because the fox feels really comfortable. Obviously he's back here an hour and a half. Um, 
it was exciting actually. I was running down with the shotgun and it felt like some tactical squad, you know, going after the fox. But uh, because I thought for sure that he was going to pop his head on the trail, like just slightly. If I could get a glimpse of the head uh, down the trail, I was, I, it would have been an instant trigger pull and uh, his head would have been disintegrated with the shotgun. So, but he didn't, uh, I didn't get a glance of a head in the trail. Uh, so if, if he was running through the grass, he was just headed, he was gone. So he wasn't looking back. Anyways, uh, that was exciting. <laughs> I think we might get him today. Okay, the ducks are still pretty uh, stressed out. Uh, I've got the shotgun right here beside me. Uh, they're all at this end of the pen. So this fox, even though that I'm right here on the, bla on the deck, is still down there right on the edge of the property. And uh, I, I the, well, look at here, the ducks, they're still they're freaked out. They're, they will not go to the other end. <coughs> they're, they're all up here like just stressed right out. So there, that fox hasn't left. He's still there. And they keep doing the, the quack for the signal to sort of, I guess, it's a stay on alert type quack. I'm just washing up the uh, eggs from uh, the egg recon this morning and I want to, you know, just get, give you an idea of how stressed the ducks are of this lockdown the last five days. Uh, I got 22 eggs today. Uh, that normally right now with the, with the molt that's going on, I was getting like 36, 38 a day. Uh, and the normal at the, at the peak is like 60. So uh, the birds are definitely seriously uh, stressed out uh, you know, and egg production. Like they're safe in the pan. But they're getting so freaked out all the time from you know the the fox coming to the coming to the fence uh, line that uh, you know 22 eggs so they, it's really stressing them out so I've got to I've got to get this guy which I think I am I have a good feeling all right it's time to put the 63 Muscovy eggs I think they're from June the fifth uh, is when they were put in the incubator so they're due to go into the hatcher today and and then like I said it's uh, July the eighth is the next two more days uh, we're gonna put the uh, 180 ruins and peaking in but right now we're gonna get the, I'll get the Muscovy tray out and I've got the uh, trays already. And we're going to throw them in and hopefully, hopefully we'll have a better outcome. I'm just moving, uh, I just finished moving the uh, eggs uh, to the hatcher tray from their uh, egg trays. But look at this, we got a Muscovy pipping through. Look at that. And I've, I've seen it move here. I'll just hold on here. You can probably see the thing move. You can see the beak. Oh, too close. Sorry about that. Yeah, there it goes, just moved. Just wait a second, I'll give you another shot here of it moving and then we'll, I'll show you the other egg. Come move little guy. Uh, okay, it's not moving, but here's the other one. Where are you? There's right there's this way. I gotta get this there. I don't know if it's showing up or not. I'm trying to get an angle here. I don't you can just see a crack. So there's another one that's pipping through, but so that's uh that's really, really good news on the Muscovy because I we know we haven't had any pip through this early. Because today would be day uh, 32, so because they hatched day 35. All right, let's. I'm gonna put them in the uh, hatcher here. The hatcher's totally ready, and uh, oh, maybe we'll have a better luck on the Muscovies this hatch. All right, I've got the Muscovy eggs in. Uh, we've got a good view. Uh, if this guy uh, pips through anymore. We're gonna keep a good close eye on him because there he is. We'll see what happens. I've just missed the eggs. Uh, the hatch was completely cleaned out. It was absolutely filthy. I washed everything, uh, fan, the whole everything got washed. So it's uh, there's nothing in here that uh, from the previous hatch, and it was filthy because the holes drilled through the side of the uh, the, the trays. Uh, I guess the air turbulence, uh, the walls were covered in, in uh, round circles of, uh, of fluff and so there's definitely air, air current happening and it moved the dirt everywhere. It's just filthy inside so it's all cleaned up, it smells brand new, clean, uh, so it's uh, that plastic uh, Coroplast lining, great idea. So. And now I'm going to go uh, clean the gun, uh, 22. Well first I'm going to take a test shot, make sure it's hitting exactly where it's supposed to be hitting uh, for tonight. I'm going to take it over, I'm going to clean it all up so it's uh, no chance of a jam. And I'm going to set up upstairs, uh, take the screen out of the window and uh, put a wood uh, to tilt the window up so I can get a good shot. And uh, We're going to sit up there tonight and hopefully uh, I'll get some footage. Maybe I'll, I'll be lucky enough we'll get footage of a kill shot uh, if things work out. So that would be cool to get the fox and end this terror on the ducks because you know the ducks are stressed out. Plus it's just, you know, they're locked up now. They we're going on day five or six. I don't know. It's, it seems like forever they've been locked up inside. So I'm gonna go clean the 22. And I'm just setting up here to do a test shot. I have a little target set up, 
but I don't think I'm going to get a chance here because the the uh, ducks have started freaking out. Unfortunately, I have, like I said, I haven't done a test shot, so I don't know at this range where the gun is hidden. But I'm loaded. If he shows up. But like all the ducks are at this end of the pen. I don't know if you, you can hear them quacking, but they're all at this end. Come on, Mr. Fox. I was hoping to get a test shot off. It's been about two hours since his last appearance. I don't see him anywhere on the tree line or the grass, but the ducks are definitely freaked out. Except the, the uh, ducklings don't have a clue. Here, I'm going to try to move the camera so you can see all the ducks at this end. Now we can get a shot here. I've got it on a tripod here, so and I'm holding the gun with one hand, so let's see them all, they're all at this end. All the ducks are at the gate. So that means the fox has gotta be in the yard. The fox is definitely here. Uh the all the ducks are just freaked out at this end. They're all huddled at this corner being really quiet. Oh, I hope the gun's sighted in the right place. The fox is definitely here. Uh, the, all the ducks are just freaked out at this end. They're all huddled at this corner being really quiet. gun sighted in the right place. Mr. Fox is definitely here because the ducks are not, this is not normal for them to be all at this end like this. Alright, I think uh, the Mr. Fox left. The ducks calmed down. They're, they're, they're at this end but they're not making any noise so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, I gotta take a test shot. I just want to know uh, for sure where I'm hitting so bear with me here. All right, I'm going to uh, take a test shot here on my little fox face because I want to make sure that I'm uh, sighted in at, you know, at this distance because I've, I've already, I sighted the rifle in for 150 feet, so this is only about maybe uh, 75 or 80. All right, where'd I hit? Uh, 
And I'll see what the camera says. Oh, a little high on the fox head. Yeah. Alright, so at this distance I gotta aim lower. Or just above the right ear. Or I guess that'd be the right ear. Alright. I'll take another shot here and I'll aim uh, a little lower at this range. that time all right so I hit uh, just off the cheek on there. so I'm hitting within so I'm at the the right height I'm just over a touch on this so the scope here now this is a tiny target uh, just to give you an idea how small this target is so I'm grouping it uh, well let's go down there with the camera and I'll show you how tight it's grouping Okay, well, uh, I've taken my two test shots to see where I'm hitting, and now uh, this, uh, at this range, I'll show you. Okay, so, I, um, the first shot I took was right here. I aimed directly for here, and I hit here. And then the next shot I took, I aimed on here, and I hit here. So, it, there's, it's me moving a little bit here. But it's definitely a body shot. I'm not going to take a chance. Uh, I'm going to just hit him in the body. So, in a little box case. So I have a second one here I was going to use when I clean the gun just to make sure I didn't knock the scope out. So, I'm going to go clean the gun and do the duck chores, get all this taken care of so that there's no commotion, and we'll wait for Mr. Fox to show up. Well, I'm doing the chores with a shotgun slung over my back just in case. Pivot head's running just in case uh, because we don't know, you know, what uh, is going to happen here today. So I'm getting a, a wheelbarrow to uh, carry the feed so that I can uh, carry the shotgun. Just in case this guy shows up, you never know. Are you coming with me, Doug? Hiding in the house like a fool, Doug. A silly dog. Let's go. Doug, stay away from the fence. Stop, stop. Doug, you gotta stop going through the fence so quick. My God, dog, you're stupid. Doug, relax. Relax, Doug. <laughs> Good, yeah. well, look at the stress on your poor face, eh? Oh, Doug. Um, the ducks, even the, the young ducks here, it's only uh, quarter to six, and the amount of ducks that are inside here is just not normal. Like, the barn is almost full of ducks. So, the, the, uh, the fox situation is freaking everybody out. And more are coming in here, so, they're not liking this. So nobody's enjoying the fox uh, problem. Nobody. The ducks are absolutely whacked right out here. I'm walking around and trying to get, and I can't get anywhere because they're uh, just you know, going into the corners here. They don't want to go back outside. So that, that fox has really got everybody strung out here bad. I know it's got me strung out because all I want to do is end its life so that I can get back to normal here. All right, guys, I'm going to, uh, oh, I, I wish I had a better camera right now to show you the difference between Midget Duck and, the, and his uh, brothers, but the difference is, like, ridiculous. Uh, he is, well, I'm trying to get you a good shot with the pivot heads. That's him right there. 
You know, right there, that's Midget Duck, and that's his brother and sisters. Look at the size difference here. Like, look at them. Well, I gotta get in here uh, to uh, fill the wa feed up, and the ducks are uh, relaxed. Ducks, come on out. See, this is the thing. They're all crowding each other. Everybody's getting crowded here. Come on out. So I just got them to, to go over there, and that's as, they don't even go out. That's as far as they'll go. Everybody's really freaked out. Come on out, ducks. Let me get in that corner. The little Muscovy uh, ducks need uh, some water to have a bath. They're uh, so dirty from all the ducks walking on top of them. Now, I won't be coming back out here tonight because uh, I'm doing uh, the chores early so that I can get into lockdown and uh, Go upstairs and just wait for this fox. It's definitely got these poor ducks all stressed out. <laughs> 